everybody, this is Leia and I am super excited to share this video with you because we are going to be looking at the Chrysalis Tarot. It hasn't been out for very long as I'm filming this. The reason I'm excited is I have yet to build a working relationship with this deck and I already love it. I think the colors and the artwork are just gorgeous and you'll see what I mean for yourself when we look at the cards. It's rather amusing because I have so many oracle and tarot card decks, many of which we haven't even used in the daily draw on my Facebook page, which you know about if you're following that page, and we haven't used a bunch of those decks either in the reading videos that we do on this channel. And yet, this one, I've just received it and I already really like it. I normally wait a while before doing a review on a tarot or oracle deck so I can let you know what my personal experience is when it comes to working with it, but I intend on using these cards very frequently in our next set of videos to come and I wanted anyone I'll be doing a reading with to be able to see these cards so you have some sense of familiarity with them. I think Chrysalis being the pupa in which a moth or a butterfly is encased while it transitions to the imago state is a very fitting name for this deck, which it appears is focused on helping us transform or transmutate, as in connect with our higher selves and a greater spiritual reality that goes beyond what meets the eye or the material realm. Let's move on to the box. That's it right there in front of us. It isn't a hard shell kind of case, which I tend to favor, but it does feel a little bit thicker than other US game systems tarot card boxes, which I am really thankful for as I prefer storing my decks in their original cases. I'll give you a closer look. The Little White Book is 60 pages long, and while I adore the thick, meaty guidebooks that come with some of the other decks, I feel like all the words, which are written by Tony Brooks, by the way, are a perfect length because this deck puts a strong emphasis on intuition. The keywords and brief descriptions help a lot, but they're really all we need as a jumping off point to launch into our own interpretations which could then change with each reading and spread that we do. So here's the little white book. And at the very end, there's actually one spread included. So if this happens to be your very first tarot deck, at least you have one layout to work with if you want to start right away. And now let's move on to the cards. The gorgeous artwork is by Holly Sierra, and I can honestly say that there isn't a single picture here that I dislike. Of course, I am drawn to some of them more than others, but you know how it is. Generally speaking, among tarot and oracle card decks, if you do readings yourself, you could love the overall concept, and in my case, that's why I work with the cards. But there's some artwork here and there that doesn't really do anything for me, and I've found that that's not the case with the Chrysalis Tarot. I think the colors, which are mostly earth tones and vibrant pastels, are so pretty. In my opinion, they imbibe the cards with a certain freshness and hope, and at the same time, there's a down-to-earth vibe even as we're being encouraged to explore our spiritual nature. Plus, be on the lookout for subtle symbology in the imagery. If you ever get these cards, you'll see that when you read the little white book, there are little things here and there in the pictures that are part of the story they tell. And also, another thought is, I think that these cards would be pretty good for doing shadow work with, even if they're bright. The colors are on the brighter side and they're not dark at all. There's not a hint or trace of darkness here, even if there are some jewel tones here and there. So despite that, I think that 
this is a good deck to do shadow work with because it does delve into and explore the subconscious. So this is what the back of the cards looks like. And you can see that if you do reversals, you can work with these cards in that way. Although no reverse meanings are included in the guidebook. And size-wise, this is a Radiant Rider Weight card against one of the Chrysalis Tarot cards. You can see that height-wise, they are the same, but the Chrysalis Tarot card is a little bit wider. The card texture is matte, so that's the kind of finish it has. It's not glossy and shiny, which I think I am liking more and more as time goes by because my fingerprints get all over the really glossy cards. And card stock is really good too. It's, it's on the thicker side. And then in terms of a border, you can see that there is a thin border all around and it's thicker underneath to give room to the keyword or the name of the card. So let's talk about the Major Arcana. What makes these cards different from the Major Arcana in the traditional Rider Waite Smith's Tarot is the archetypes are given a different twist. Oh, and I also want to mention, while I still remember, that this is one of those decks that Justice is number 8 and Strength is number 11. Now let's look at some of the cards. So, using this one as an example, you can see that underneath is the traditional Rider Waite Smith name, and then the new name is right above it. The Fool card, however, is the hero in this deck, and I think that it's really awesome that Merlin is here. And on a personal level, it is even more awesome to me that Morgan Le Fay is here because she is one of my most favorite people ever. Gaia for the Empress. Green Man for the Emperor. And while we are looking at this card of Mott for Justice, I also want to say that you will notice that these cards don't have a single religious or cultural background or tradition. If ever there was any theme that these cards follow, I would say it is that path of inner transformation. And here is another really cool change in my opinion in the Major Arcana. The Hierophant is Divine Child, so we're not faced with that really scary religious authority figure. Instead, we are reminded to look towards the Divine Child in us for our spiritual path and our spiritual growth. I also really like Bella Rosa, who takes the place of the traditional devil. And I love Kali being part of the archetypal tower card. Now for the minor arcana, each suit has been renamed. Let me show you. So instead of pentacles or coins, we have stones. And these cards are representative of the element of Earth. See what I mean about the artwork? It's just really pretty. And instead of cups, we have mirrors. These are the water cards, so mirrors are really fitting since they reflect, just like water does. And instead of wands, we have spirals, which correspond to the element of fire. And if you notice, there aren't any keywords underneath. There is the basic label of what the card is, but any trigger words that help you interpret the cards, you won't find them in the minors. And then, instead of swords, we have scrolls. Black unicorn, how cool, huh? 
and there's Excalibur right there. Again, I have to say that I just love that there are so many references to the Arthurian legends here. Another thing that I want to mention is, as with the majors, the minors mostly focus on a different aspect of the card meanings than you may be used to, if you're familiar with the rider Waitsmith system. It's as if the traditional framework has been stripped down to a skeleton, making these cards not just a knockoff of the rider Waitsmith, but they have a life of their own, a new system that they follow. In quite a few cards, there is even an outright deviation, I would say, from the standard meanings that's completely unrelated. So it's wise to get to know these cards and really build a relationship with them, rather than just working off of your knowledge of the Rider Waite Smith system. Last but not least in this video are the court cards. So let's move on to those. In this deck, they're all members of a troop. And if you, as a tarot reader, have ever struggled with these personalities, you may have the completely opposite experience with the Chrysalis Tarot court cards. They each have a keyword underneath the picture, and these are very different from what you may have gotten used to in the traditional tarot. But the point is, these words can easily trigger your intuition and help you work with these cards without you having to memorize a book meaning. And here they are, the court cards. So you can see that the traditional name, although in this case it isn't even really the traditional name since it's called stones instead of pentacles, but you get what I mean, is right there. And then above it is the description of the personality. So. I'm not going to show you all of them, but you get my point. Although, yeah, that one right there, I think, is one of my favorite ones, along with... Which one was it? Oh, this one also. To close this video, I am going to say that these cards absolutely fascinate me, and I want to use them over and over again right now, so you can expect to see them a lot in upcoming videos. Thank you so much for joining me for this first look video. I will probably be focusing more on reading videos since those are more popular and I think that a lot of viewers gravitate towards those because they're not professional tarot or oracle card readers or intuitive readers. But whenever a really good deck comes along or something that I feel strongly about, even if it's part of my collection, existing collection, then I will do a review video in case you're one of the viewers who does enjoy these. I'll be back really soon. I hope you're having a great day, no matter where you are in the world. Bye for now and namaste!